on this edition of Check 6 Aviation. <laughs> Oops, we ordered the wrong part. So we press on, coming up. Welcome back to Check 6 Aviation, my friend. It is January 2024, so happy freaking new year. And yes, I had an issue with one of, with my shipping crate years ago, and I'm still dealing with it. Uh, I had a rear spar on the horizontal stabilizer that got bent up in the process, and I thought naively that I could just bend it back into shape until I reached out to Vans and said, hey, can I actually do this? And of course, Sterling from Vans said, if it were my plane, I wouldn't. So I'm not. And so in the process of finding out how much shipping is gonna be um, uh, and stuff, yeah, I figured, okay, well, probably not that big of a deal to uh, go ahead and get, you know, take a trip up there. Well, probably not that big of a deal to order a part. Uh, yeah, it is insanely expensive. So back when I really had these conversations, the part was like $65. Well, with everything that's going on in the Vans world right now, those prices have skyrocketed exponentially, at least double from what they were. So it, I paid something like $65 for a part and the shipping was like $850 to get it here. <gasps> oh my God. Um, yeah, I could drive from Abilene, Texas all the way up to Aurora, Oregon and back for less in gas. I mean, I, I figure 50, uh, $550 in fuel alone and pick up the part at will call. That is an option though, but you know, if, if you live close. Uh, I'm planning on making the trip sometime in March, like around spring break, uh, between uh, the 9th and the 13th-ish. So anyone that lives along the route, you can go, you can kind of like do Google, Google Maps from Abilene, Texas to Aurora, Oregon. Uh, I'm willing to stop and pick up the part for you. <laughs> Just chip in a little bit for gas, that's all I ask. And I'll save you a bunch on shipping, potentially. If it fits, it ships. I've got a minivan, so go figure. So anyway, we're gonna go ahead and just press forward, do what we can on section eight. Uh, we won't be able to do anything with the rear spar, uh, except for maybe the making the rear spar caps for the, uh, and also the, the some of the bearings, uh, but, I have an extra for, uh, forward spar for a Vans RV-10 and any, any uh, other aircraft that re, that use an HS-1002. So it's kind of a good thing, I think. And I don't have to worry so much if I goober up the front spar. I've got a spare. If I don't end up using it, hey, I'll let you guys know if you could, if anyone out there can use one, and you're especially if you're close by, especially if you live in Texas, I'll come and give it to you. Well, not give it. I'm, I'll sell it to you for the, the going rate, uh, and you won't have to pay anything for shipping, more, more than likely. We'll, we'll, we'll hash it out. But anyway, so I've got this nice little um, outdoor air, or outdoor work area now that I don't hit. So that way I can go ahead and get some of the larger parts done uh, because I have chosen to prime the interior spaces of my airplane. And so I'm, I've got this table built out of uh, good old Vans aircraft uh, stock wood from shipping crates. So let's get back to it. So the first step that I feel like I can do is make the spar caps for the rear stable, the rear spar, or the forward spar rather. And one thing that I wish Vans had done in the, or in the vertical stabilizer that they did here was they put two notches for where you're supposed to cut. And before in the 
horizontal and the vertical stabilizer spar caps, you actually had to make some measurements. Now, I'm not opposed to measuring, but anytime you have notches that show you where you're supposed to cut, that's actually a lot easier. So here we go. We're over at the yeah the bandsaw area and yeah using the the uh, the belt sander. Yeah, that's a ticket. To trim away, actually to uh, really file away what doesn't belong, uh, what they want, what Vans wants uh, to not be there. And I'm doing this for all of the spar caps. So you may be asking yourself why I chose to just basically sand away uh, what didn't belong versus just be going to the bandsaw like I am right now. Well, I find that my bandsaw skills are not up to, well, let's just say that skill degradation is a very real thing, not just in aviation but everything else too. When you don't use them for a while, you do tend to lose them. And it had been a rather long time since I had been out in the shop. So this is one of the advantages of living down in Texas when it's January slash February down here. The weather during the daytime is rather nice as opposed to where i'm originally from which is the chicago suburbs this time of year yeah no you're not going out at least not for very long and not dressed like i am right now so here we're doing what i thought was deburring turns out i met a friend of i made a new friend that actually works for envoy as an amp and he gave me a few major tips on how to get this build looking like it just came out of the factory, like it was done by professionals. Um, now, one of the things I'm doing here is I'm making the HS1008 attachment brackets. And I was looking all over for these parts uh, because I was like, I think I was thinking it was something that was already supplied, but no, you have to make these. And then, disaster struck. As I was cutting the uh, the angle, the aluminum angle to make the bracket, the attachment brackets for the for, you know, the horizontal stabilizer, my bandsaw blade broke. And it's kind of a good thing because I was using the original bandsaw blade that came with it, and it was made for wood. No! Oh! So, quick uh, order from Amazon. Got a couple, yeah, bandsaw blades. Actually, I had purchased a couple of bandsaw blades before I even got my bandsaw, and uh, I would not recommend that, by the way, because I found out that there is different size bandsaw blades. So, uh, after trying out this one and figuring out that it's, hey, it's too big, bonehead, that, you know, figured out, hey, just uh, look up what size blade I need for the 9-inch skill saw, and boom, we're back in business. Oops, I made a goop. So, I was able to get the, get one of the two HS 1008s cut to the exact size, however, not so much on these. I am one thirty second of an inch off. Um, I'm going to reach out to Vans and see what they say. I think I'm probably not going to be in a world of hurt here, but we'll find out. And of course, I'll let you know.
So the consensus from the Facebook, you know, the Vans, uh, Vans uh, Facebook builders group was that 16th of an inch, yeah, definitely get a new one. Uh, but I was probably only off by a 32nd of an inch. I still erred on the side of caution and got a new angle shipped to me from Vans via Priority Mail. It was here pretty quickly. Uh, and here I am marking out the other bracket that I need. And quite honestly, yeah, I'm happy with the result. Uh, although the cut lines do leave some marks, especially when I'm you know, making sure that it's down to the correct dimensions. The dimensions that they have you cut, that I cut initially really wouldn't have mattered any because I had to make some more cuts that uh, really put the difference into what the finished product was like. So as you can see here, I actually met someone that I think I mentioned a bit earlier in this video. And that's been a, this video process, making these videos takes maybe a couple days, maybe three or four days, depending upon how much time I have. But I met someone that is an AMP for, for Envoy, uh, you know, the, the American Airlines regional carrier. And he taught me some stuff that really made the difference. And you see, on, if you look on the sides, these sides are smooth. There are no champ, uh, no, uh, you know, there's nothing that says, hey, th this was done by a bandsaw or uh, there's, no, there's no grit lines. It's definitely smooth, which would help reduce the chances for cracking because this is a major stress point on these brackets so here we go you see here the plans that for they have the final dimensions and this step is done in the process of looking at the plans on this page I looked to the previous page and realized that even though it dealt with the main the rear spar that I don't have at this point, there was still one thing that I could do, and that is put together the main bearing for the yeah for the rudder or for the elevators rather. So that's what I'm doing here. I did figure out that I didn't have my squeezer set quite right, and I underscores squeeze under squeezed. I don't know what the proper term is here. I'm an airplane builder, yeah, not a grammatical wizard. Most of the time I am, but anyway, um, <laughs> I uh, yeah I didn't squeeze them quite enough uh, in the process, so I went back and got that done, but not before getting started on uh, finishing up the spar caps for the for for the main spar. Um, now the process here was a little bit uh, interesting because you had to count. 33 holes from one side and place the uh, place a 1 8 inch mark on each side of the spar cap uh, and line up as close as possible uh, to that 33rd hole for, e for each line. Uh, the lines didn't quite line up accurately like where it was like split right down the middle of the hole on each side so I kind of split the difference and I think it worked I think it'll work out really well so here we are we're drilling out yeah I've got different views yeah uh, coming here so uh, the 1 8 inch spot you know, dr you know, drilling out the 1 8 inch holes um, decided that for this evolution uh, going over and doing most of them on the yeah, on the spar web, on the the uh, drill press was probably a wiser option. So I'll be uh, shooting, going back and forth between the overhead, and there you see me adjusting the camera angle on my workbench view so that it'll capture that. But that and that'll come into play uh, a significant role here in a moment, where well. We'll just find out. But uh, considering the fact that this is all, I mean, this, this bar is like 11 and a half feet long. It was massively different to work with than anything I've ever drilled pressed before. 
and uh, it was kind of a challenge. I had to uh, move some things around and kind of play a balancing act in, in a way. It, if you've ever seen a high wire act, the that long pole that they used to balance on, that's kind of felt that that's what it, this felt like I was working with. I felt like I was drilling a really long balancing pole, and so yeah, it, in the shop itself is not that long. I mean, it's 16 foot deep, um, you know, from front to back, so it's doable. But there's a ton, there are times when the spar actually went out the door. So that's where we're at at this point. Um, I've got in the next video, I'll show you uh, some deburring techniques that I've learned. Uh, I have not yet gotten to the point where I am pr ready to prime, but that's coming soon. Um, did go ahead and put together some some uh, some jigs that will be needed here when I assemble everything. Just head on over to my Instagram page and you'll see content that is not ready for the, vi the YouTube video yet. And if you really want to support us, consider being a member of our flight crew on our Patreon page. It really helps out the process, the build process, and be sure to, to mash that like and subscribe button down below on these videos. It tells the YouTube algorithm that this channel needs to get out to more people. In the meantime, though, if you ever consider doing a kit on your own, use my builder number down below as a reference as a yeah in the refer as a referral to vans vans will send me a hundred dollars as a thank you gift and doesn't cost you any more money out of pocket i really appreciate you watching consider watching these other videos and until next until next time remember this time and always check your six